Good morning, everybody. Thank you very much for taking the time to be here today. I truly, truly appreciate it. Well, it's hard to follow that guy. <laughs> He's a fountain of information, that's for sure. But, you know, I want to thank um, HowStreet.com for putting on the money show today. Uh, again, thank you all for being here. It is obviously a very interesting and fascinating world that we live in right now. And I'm here to talk to you a little bit today about, you know, where we are, how we got into this mess, and uh, a little bit about what comes next. And of course, right now everyone is wondering exactly what will happen. And of course, I'll talk a little bit about what's in the news and about the mess we got in and whether Superman here is going to be able to, uh, to get us out or not. But there's no doubt, you know, right now we are in the middle of, of a financial storm that really is going to be the greatest event that's probably taken place in the lives of everybody in this room. It really will rival what happened in the 1930s. Certainly it's going to eclipse some of the changes we've seen over the last 40 years, without a doubt. Now everybody in this room obviously is familiar with some of the things that have gone on, the day-to-day -day reality that we've seen. For example, what's happened in real estate, the real estate market. How many people, of course, in this market and others around the world have all of a sudden come face to face with reality and a massive loss of wealth. But it's not just there, it's also in the financial markets, not just real estate, but in the stock market, etc. And uh, we're in the middle of this financial turbulence right now, which definitely is gonna, not going to stop. And of course, it's been happening not just in Canada, the US, but right around the entire world. And of course, it's going to continue. And every day, it seems to get worse. When just a few days ago, we heard about Nortel. Whoever would have thought that this company actually would go basically to zero. Why has this happened? Well, you know, much of it, of course, has to do with the, uh, the failure of the political class. Um, and of course, decisions that people have made, including this guy, made some of the worst ever. And of course, the financial markets have uh, voted uh, of him. But of course, all of this has caused basically a wall of worry. And right now, we're worried that Washington has done perhaps the wrong thing. Maybe these trillion dollar bailouts are actually not going to work. Who knows? Stock markets have been wildly unpredictable in what they're thinking is going to happen. We've had you know, terrible days, then we've had tremendous one-day gains, and, and, and cons you know, financial consumers have no idea today what to do. So we've seen many people doing actually the wrong thing. They've been taking what have been paper losses and turning them into real losses. I'm not sure that right now you want to do that. I'm not sure it's too late. And in fact, it probably is. Because right around the world, all of these things, um, markets are getting spooked by headlines, the news is getting worse every day. You saw, you see the GDP numbers yesterday? Economists were expecting the Canadian economy would shrink by half, basically 0.4 of a percentage point in November. It shrunk by 0.7. That doesn't sound like much, does it? But 0.7 of 1% a month times 12 months, guess what that is? That's at around 9% a year. Do you know what the definition of a depression is? That's when the economy shrinks by 10%. We're now shrinking by 9%. So you can see how close we are right now to a problem. And many people around the world are wondering just where the hell their money has gone. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about that. And why am I here? Well, I don't know. Okay. Um, well, actually, I, I've written a series of books over the last number of years about what's going on in the financial markets, personal finance, trying to understand where we're at in any of these particular years and where we're going. Now, having said that, I must admit, from time to time, I have actually lost my mind and gone into politics. And if you followed my stories, story, you may know all of the trouble I've gotten myself in, particularly when I met him. <laughs> so all I want to say is today, I'm particularly glad to be back here doing what I'm doing in my first love. Now, in the real world outside of politics, it has been absolutely an extraordinary time. 
We have seen the collapse of century-old institutions. We have seen wall-to-wall -wall gloom and doom right around the country. We've had people wondering how they're going to actually cope now. And of course, in this environment, a year ago, I wrote a book called Greater Fool. And in that book, I predicted that the residential real estate market in Canada would follow the pattern that we have seen in the United States. At the time, most people said it was nuts. But sadly, I was right. Now, I've written another book. It's called After the Crash. In this book, I'm trying to determine exactly what happens now. Not just to real estate, but financial markets, precious metals, and all of these other things. So let's have a look at where we are. And what in the world right now is happening? Well, as we know, the stock market last year, and there it is, 2008, this market lost 34% of its value. It was basically the worst performance since the Great Depression. And of course, it's hard to be optimistic when you've guys like, got guys like uh, Bernanke, the chairman of the US Federal Reserve, who has been very, very dour. And when you read between the lines, central bankers actually in Canada and the United States are sending us strong signals that things actually are going to get better. And the chief thing to remember right now is the recession that we've got at the moment is not a financial recession. This one right now, you know, the way recessions happen, they start basically usually in the financial sector. And many of them end over there. But this recession has gone into the real economy, where you can feel it and taste it every day, and that makes it a lot harder situation to deal with. But, you know, the politicians have been trying to deal with this in Canada and the United States, and Wall Street right now has become that symbol of greed. Did you hear Obama the other day talking about the bonuses on, on Wall Street? Good on him, right? Because absolutely, we have been all let down by the institutions that we thought once served us. And political masters have been trying to rescue this thing absolutely every way they could. You know, we got a crisis of confidence, a crisis on Wall Street, on Main Street, in Washington, in London, and in Ottawa, and, and Moscow, right around the world, there's this crisis going on. So we've now clearly seen how politics basically intersects with the financial world, and how it's all intertwined now in the midst of this giant bailout that is going on. And it's really a, a major failure of the system we've got, and, and that makes this a very pivotal time indeed. We got a loss, of course, in uh, not only in the, in the financial markets, but now it's in the real economy, it's in manufacturing, it's in jobs. All of this has been made a lot worse over the last little while, but what we've seen with energy prices, which of course went to the moon, that was very bullish for the Canadian market, for energy investors, but it freaked out consumers as they saw the price of a liter of gasoline and home heating oil and everything else go to the moon, and we were just getting used to the, all that inflationary expectation of high energy prices, and what happened then? We'll take a look at the price of oil. That was another bubble. And it popped. So we've seen, you know, the tech market, dot coms, real estate, and now commodities. <coughs> All of these were bubblified, and then they collapsed. Very difficult environment to know what to do next. And this commodity slump, of course, is bad news for Canada. But then, of course, we're also into a deflationary environment. I mean, take a look at what's happening with manufactured goods and cars. They're actually getting cheaper all the time. And that deflation is now just knocking the legs right out from under our giant industrial companies like General Motors and Ford and Chrysler because they're dealing with inflation as the value of their products goes down. Well, some people want to talk about gold. The last, uh, our last speaker just talked about that as well. Put all your money into gold. Is that wise? Some people truly and totally believe that right now. They think the price of gold is going crazy, especially because the financial sector is losing ground, imploding, and there's actually billions and trillions more losses around the world to come. And you know this real estate situation? We're not even close to the bottom of that yet in the United States. And of course, it's come here to Canada too. As I predicted, it would, sadly, it's now true. And we've got our own crisis of this just getting actually worse. Real estate values in Canada will continue to go down. In fact, you're going to see this accelerate as we go on in many markets. For example, in the United States, today, you have got markets where um, people are breaking into houses and stealing the copper pipes. Why would they do that? Because they're worth more than the house is worth. That's why. 
and in many markets around, you've got actually um, this taking place. Well, you know, it's crazy. Real estate sometimes defies logic. Take a look at this house. This house is a story and a half, 1,200 square feet, sits on a 40-foot lot. It is currently for sale. How much would you pay for this house? 600 bucks. Where is it? It's in Detroit. Actually not a bad neighborhood. But you know what? Real estate has become an absolute pariah now in the United States. People don't want it. They'll do anything to get out of it. They want to run away from it. And of course, this is what is starting to happen in Canada as well. 